Just seven miles separate Alpine, Utah from one of the fastest growing tech hubs in the country, the Silicon Slopes. Over there are billion dollar startups and gleaming office parks. Over here is a quiet mountain city of about 10,250 residents nestled against the Wasatch Range. At first glance, Alpine is the mold for the stereotype of where you would think Utah's successful tech wizards live. It's small, affluent, beautiful, and filled with account executives and product managers. But being small doesn't mean they have small problems. Behind the scenes, they're facing engineering challenges all too familiar to public works and engineering professionals around the country. While the gleaming tech towers over in Lehigh appear to have endless capital resources, Alpine operates on a lean budget. You might ask how that's possible in one of Utah's most expensive zip codes, second only to Park City. The reality is Alpine's beauty hides a financial paradox. It's a city where prosperity doesn't automatically translate into public revenue. With a population that largely commutes for work, a limited commercial tax base, and resident expectations that are higher than the property values, the city's engineering and public works departments have learned to make ingenuity go further than money ever could. So how does a small, mostly residential city manage to maintain one of its most expensive assets cost-effectively? The answer starts with context and Alpine's place in Utah County's rapidly expanding economy. When people think of Utah County, they think of Lehigh's tech towers, provost college crowds, and explosive economic growth. Alpine isn't part of that boom, at least not in terms of public funds. It's what's typically referred to as a bedroom community, a lot of residential housing with a small commercial footprint. While it does make it a nice place to live, it also makes it harder for the local government to collect the tax revenues to fund the amenities that the residents enjoy. While neighboring cities collect sales tax revenue from restaurants, retail, and offices, Alpine's road maintenance fund depends mostly on property taxes, state allocations, and grants. This is where the problems start. Property taxes are a steady source of revenue, but grants and state transportation funds are far from guaranteed and can vary dramatically from year to year. Commercial taxes provide additional revenue streams while also diversifying the tax revenue base. In Alpine, a single commercial property can generate two to three times more tax revenue than a residential home. And that's just the property taxes. Beyond that, businesses contribute additional tax revenue through sales taxes, licensing fees, utility taxes, and employment taxes. Alpine has few of these. The result is a city where residents enjoy million dollar views and million dollar homes, but the city government itself has to make every dollar stretch. Regardless how you feel about taxes, the imbalance isn't unique. Across the country, affluent residential suburbs face the same dilemma. Small tax base, high expectations. Whether it's Colorado's mountain towns, Tennessee suburbs, or New England villages, thousands of small cities near adjacent commercial centers rely on limited revenue streams to maintain miles of pavement utilities and drainage systems. Alpine is a great example of how to make it work. So far, we've focused on Alpine's financial constraints, and they're significant, but money isn't the only challenge. Alpine's geography adds an entirely different layer of complexity, one that makes pavement preservation not just beneficial, but essential. Alpine sits at roughly 5,000 feet above sea level and gets about 66 inches of average snowfall every year. Those freeze-thaw cycles, combined with steep grades and runoff from the Wasatch Mountains, create conditions that can expedite pavement failures. While cities in warmer climates battle UV and heat, Alpine trades less intense UV for water and temperature swings. Luckily, they've developed a system to deliver quality streets that their residents demand without bankrupting the city. Completely reconstructing just one mile of residential road can cost well over a million dollars. Alpine allocated 1.35 million for streets in their general fund in its 2024 fiscal year budget. Let's assume a road with no preventative maintenance lasts about 20 years. While the exact number of centerline miles Alpine manages isn't published, most estimates put it between 60 and 70 miles. Based on those numbers, if Alpine repaved just one mile of road per year, it would consume their entire street budget. And over the course of a 20 year pavement life cycle, Cycle, only 20 of those 60 to 70 miles could be reconstructed. That would leave roughly two thirds of the city streets deteriorating faster than they could be repaired. The math simply doesn't pencil out. And that's assuming the costs don't go up, which in today's world seems almost laughable to say. Shane Sorensen, now Alpine City Administrator and formerly its Public Works Director, summed it up best. Yeah, some of the challenges we face are just, just making dollars stretch. Uh, everything is just, just went through the roof with, with oil prices going up and everything. And so um, we've had to kind of change how we do things. Their solution was a philosophical shift. Treat roads like investments, not expenses. Instead of waiting for failures, Alpine decided to prevent them. So Alpine built a preservation toolbox that matches treatments to pavement conditions. Here's why timing matters. Treating a road extends the life of the road and makes it cheaper to own. 
long-lasting early interventions used strategically can reduce the cost of asphalt ownership by up to 83%. Let's go back to our earlier math. We said it costs over a million dollars to repave just one mile of road, and that road would last about 20 years today. If you look at that same pavement over a 45 year period, you'll have to repave it at least twice, assuming you have the budget. But with timely preventative treatments, that same mile of road can stay in service for decades longer at a fraction of the cost. Instead of spending a million dollars every 20 years, you can have that same road in good condition for about 17 cents on the dollar compared to full reconstruction. That might seem like a miracle, but for local governments, it's just survival. For Alpine, that difference means our annual street budget can preserve six to eight miles of good pavement instead of rebuilding just one, multiplying their impact without spending a single extra dollar, which is exactly why they leverage proactive pavement maintenance. Here's a look at how Alpine's preservation toolbox is making all the difference. What we've tried to do for the last four years is on new pavements, say we'll do an overlay within two to three years, we try to get HA5 mineral bond down on our streets because we feel like it seals the road, protects it, and enhances that life and extends the life in return saving our residents money and, and allowing us to stretch our dollar in our street maintenance budget. Before we were doing that, we were doing more overlays, more chip seals. Those were our two primary things we had in our toolbox. We, along with a few other North Utah County cities, own chip seal equipment, so we do our own. Our labor is kind of donated from the, the co-op of cities. So that worked really well. We still do some, but less and less on more residential streets, just because we found that other things are, are a little bit more beneficial and pleasing to the public. Each treatment has a clear purpose. The goal isn't to make roads look new, it's to keep them from becoming too old too soon. What ultimately convinced Alpine to invest in preservation was proof in the field. Shane Sorensen first saw HA5 high density mineral bond in Spanish Fork, where it had been on the ground for several years, yet still looked like a brand new application. Seeing that performance firsthand gave Alpine confidence to begin using it across its own network. In a city with median home costs over a million dollars, residents expect high quality roads. The challenge isn't convincing them that maintenance matters. It's explaining why proactive preservation sometimes means treating a road that still looks fine. Sorensen takes that education personally. Uh, what I try to do is educate the residents of why we're using each application. Um, I'll, I'll take the 30 minutes or whatever to put an, e an email together, send them out, say this is what we do with these type of roads, you know, these are the roads we overlay, these are the roads we microsurface, chip seal, and HA5. And explain the benefits, I even put the cost in there so they can see uh, what the cost difference is. And most of the time they're shocked that they think you should be able to overlay every street in your city and that's the only thing in your toolbox and there's no way you could make the dollar stretch. So uh, the education, I've never had one that I've explained things to on why we do which application that they haven't said, oh, that makes a lot, a lot of sense. Alpine's residents understand that the inconvenience of a road closure is worth it to extend the service life of the road and achieve a surface that stays smooth, sealed, and black for years to come. Sorensen says he's never received a complaint. In fact, he says, Yeah, very, very good feedback. I've, I've never... You know, we our roads get shut down while we're having the HA5 put down. I've never had a single complaint about that inconvenience because they know what will what it will look like after. Preservation isn't without complaints, but good engineering is about balance. Using the right treatment on the right road at the right time. The payoff is visible. Alpine Street remain in exceptional condition. Roads built decades ago can still perform well thanks to consistent preventative care. To Sorensen, the financial logic is obvious. We know that the approach we're taking is saving us money. And our residents, they think the world of the HA5 mineral bond product and love it when we put it on their street. Instead of spending one to two million dollars every couple decades to rebuild, Alpine spends a fraction of that periodically to extend pavement life, reducing life cycle costs. And Alpine isn't treating preservation as a one-time project. They're embedding it into policy. Sorensen pioneered a program that requires new subdivisions to apply HA5 high density mineral bond after the first year, ensuring long-term protection from the start and maximizing the useful life of their pavement assets. Alpine's situation may sound unique, an affluent city beside Utah's tech hub, but the lesson applies everywhere. Many communities face the same equation, limited revenue, a lot to do, and high expectations. Alpine proves that smart, data-driven maintenance can deliver results 
even without tech, oil, or tourism money. Alpine Story isn't just about asphalt, it's about stewardship. The city treats pavement like an investment to protect, not a liability to defer. For engineers and public works leaders nationwide, the question isn't whether you can afford to preserve your roads, it's whether you can afford not to. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more.